When I discovered Voron 3D printers a few years ago, I was blown away by both the design and performance of these machines. I started with the smaller V0, which I'm a big fan of, but always wanted to build a full-size V2. The flying gantry design with its stationary build plate is a pretty unique one. Well, it took some time, but this year it became a reality. I livestreamed most of the build process over the course of a couple months, and I absolutely loved the end result. The 2.4 R2 I built has made its appearance in a few previous videos, but deserves one of its own. In today's video, we'll be diving into the Voron 2.4. We'll talk about the printer itself, what the build process was like, how it's performed, and my overall thoughts after using it for a couple of months. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving in, I did want to give a huge thank you to LDO and Fabrico for sponsoring the 2.4 kit for this build series. Fabrico is an official partner of LDO based here in the US, and they carry a wide variety of printer kits, mods, and materials. If you're interested in picking up an LDO kit or upgrading your printer, I highly recommend checking them out and I will have links in the description over to their site. First publicly released in January of 2019, the V2 is a Core XY 3D printer featuring a distinct flying gantry. For anyone unfamiliar with this, the entire gantry rides up and down the printer's frame on four linear rails paired with four belts that are independently driven. This allows the printer to completely tram itself using Clipper's quad gantry leveling. At launch, this was very much a self-sourced build, but due to the growth and popularity of Voron 3D printers, there are now a number of full kit options available. I chose to do a 300mm build, but 250 and 350mm build sizes are also an option. From the first official release of V2.1, there have been both minor and major changes released, with the latest public version being V2.4 R2, which was released in February of 2022. Since many get their Voron serial number after completing their build, I was curious how the V2 stacked up against the other printers from Voron Design. Well, the V2 by far has the rest beat with roughly 6,300 serials. This is compared to the 1,350 Tridents, 3,200 V0s, and 725 switch wires. I believe as time goes on, this gap will narrow, but it does mean there are plenty of V2s out there, which is great for both getting support and for printer mods. The entire frame of the 2.4 is made up of 2020 extrusions. Due to the length of some of them, I found myself fighting a few that were wanting to twist as I tightened down the screws that held them together. I ended up using some clamps to hold the frame down to my quartz slab, which really helped. Steve from the Voron team and the Steve Builds channel let me know that adding a washer to the screw can help to prevent this twisting, which is something I plan to use for all future builds. Just like any other Voron, the recommendation for printed parts is ABS, but ASA has also become an accepted alternative due to them both being styrenes and having very similar properties. I got to test out the commercial Print It Forward program from Fabrico. This is in collaboration with the official Voron Print It Forward program and the parts I received were gorgeous. I received both the functional parts along with the complete printed parts add-on. The only thing I needed to print was Clicky and a few of the other mods that came with this kit. The specific kit I built was the LDO Rev-C. This came with a 4.3 inch touchscreen for running clipper screen, an A3D Revo hot end, and LDO's silicone heater pad. This is an addition to the handful of other upgrades and add-ons already included with the LDO kits. Some of these include stainless steel linear rails, a tool head PCB, LEDs, Nevermore filter, and clicky probe. Aside from some initial struggles of trying to get the frame squared, the build itself wasn't too difficult. Unlike the smaller V0 and its 1515 extrusions, you don't have to worry about forgetting to preload nuts. However, since the V2.4 can be built in three sizes, some of the measurements and nuts needed didn't perfectly align. The measurements were often called out, and the main nuts that needed to be added were for linear rails, but it is something that you'll need to pay attention to. The other part of the build that added some frustration were the differences between the LDO kit and the official documentation. LDO does call these out in their documentation, but there are quite a few of them. Needing to constantly remember to reference the official guide along with not skipping one of the changes from the LDO kit had me feeling a little scattered at times. I'm sure it would be a bit more work, but I would love to see the Voron guide remix to include the LDO specific changes so that only one document needs referencing. The parts included in the Rev-C kit are top notch and I still think LDO has the nicest quality extrusions out of any kit I've built. The end result is an absolutely awesome Core XY 3D printer that looks incredible. I've thrown PLA, ABS, ASA, and polyhex filaments at this 2.4 and it has done a great job. 
For the most part, I've just been running the default settings in Orca Slicer, which have been really consistent. For upgrades and mods, I haven't done many. I went with the annex style panel clips, which I'm a huge fan of. They don't require any hardware to install and are really easy to take on or off when needed. I also installed the 3DO USB camera, which is a small 4K camera sitting in the front corner of the printer. I'm still dialing in the crow's nest settings for it, but being able to monitor the printer when I'm not next to it is really nice. The only other plans I have for it are swapping out the LED strips for LED PCBs, going with CAN bus to clean up wiring and remove the XY cable chains, and possibly switching from clicky to tap. Most of these upgrades are just convenience upgrades and definitely not requirements. So do I recommend building a Voron 2.4? Well, the answer would have been definitely had I not just finished building a Voron Trident. The Trident is another Voron Core XY printer available in the same three sizes, but it uses a fixed gantry. Instead of the gantry going up and down, the bed is attached to three lead screws, which allows the bed to be trammed. Having the bed home at the top also allows you to do something like an inverted electronics mod where you can access all printer electronics without having to flip the printer over, which is a really nice convenience. The build is also simpler by not having to build the 4Z assemblies with belts and instead just using steppers with integrated lead screws. From the few people I've talked to that are running both, the performance between the two is very similar. The Trident kits are typically less than the 2.4 kits, so that may also be a determining factor for you. Personally, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. A non-moving bed has some nice niche applications like fabric printing or time lapses, and the belted Z gives quicker Z travel along with removing potential Z banding issues. Much of it will come down to personal preference, and I feel like either of these machines, as long as they are built and tuned correctly, will be absolute workhorses. And that has been the Voron 2.4. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. Maybe if this is a printer that you are considering building, I absolutely love my 2.4. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week. So there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.